Clay Tabor, Pastor Jeremy, one of my favorite humans, a brother, dear friend, partner in the gospel. He has charged me to charge you to shepherd the flock of God. And Clay, I want you to know from the very beginning here that that I love you. I want you to know that I'm thankful to God that he has brought this day to pass in your life. It's, It's proof of his faithfulness. It's proof of his grace. And I'll be honest with you, Clay, there was a time when Pastor Jeremy and I didn't know if this day would come to pass in Clay's life. I want you to think way back way back 13 years ago, to when Ashland Church was Ashland Mission of Madison County. It was three moves ago. There was only about 30 or 40 of you here, actually there at the Richmond Arts Center. It's just proof of God's hand of blessing to see all these people here today. Praise the Lord. Well, we knew starting this brand new work here in Madison County that we needed a worship leader, a a good one. It was crucial to to establishing this work here in Madison County. And and I remember uh, we didn't know any worship leaders at the time. We didn't know who to ask or who to where to find one. And and God led us, God led us to you, Clay. And uh boy, we're we're thankful for that. 22-year-old kid, young man, just newly married, no kids, tons of energy, excitement passion for the Lord, a love for his church, and the voice of a little schoolgirl. And Pastor Jeremy and I would, would talk to one another. We'd say, he'd say, I don't know, Nate. Uh, does he, is, is, is this the right guy for the job? Does he have what it takes? Is this the right man for this job? And, and our answer, church, was always the same. Our answer was, let's just give it time. Let's see what God does. And church, I'm here to tell you and to edify Clay in your presence this morning that we are here today because of the faithful and gracious hand of the sovereign God who has turned Clay into a mighty man of God, a warrior for Jesus Christ, one that's not only able to wield an axe and sing like a man, but one who is able to wield the word of God, the very sword of the spirit and direct his people like the warrior that he is. And we're thankful to God for that this morning as we ordain him in the presence of God and and his church. I want you to know, church, that Clay Tabor has been a tremendous blessing to me uh, for for these past 13 years. Uh, I I have been blessed to watch him love his wife. I have been blessed to watch him father his children, his beautiful family. I've been blessed to watch him have just a real humility about which uh, he, 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 he carries himself and he's able to receive correction and wants to learn. I've, I've been blessed to watch him be a tireless servant for this church body. And you guys have been blessed by the same. And Clay, you blessed me uh, this year, this, this past summer. I was, I was uh, I'm, I'm one of the pastors in Lexington, if you guys don't know who I am. But uh, I was in the trenches of vacation Bible school preparation. I'm sitting here writing curriculum, writing songs, writing skits, and I'm leading, you know, like hundreds of people who don't know what a hammer is to try to make a set something on par with what you'd see at Disneyland, you know? And I'm like, man, this is tough. And I'm just, I'm weary. And I come here, I can't even remember why I came here, but I came here, Clay met me, and and in passing, he wasn't even trying to be a, a brother of encouragement, but he, in passing, he said, you know what, Nate? He's smiling. We've got the best job in the world, don't we? <laughs> Just like that. And that was at a time where I didn't really think that I had the best job in the world, but God used Clay to remind me that day that, yeah, we do. We do have one of the best jobs in the whole world. Clay, I want you to remember that, that in some ways, this day marks, marks a a continuation of what you've been doing for 13 years. But in a lot of ways, this is a very brand new beginning uh, where, whereby we, in the presence of our Christ, the glorious head of the body, the great shepherd of the sheep, we as the church recognize God's gifting 
and God's calling on your life, not just to be a worship leader, but to be a shepherd of the flock of God. Uh, and, and my charge to you, Clay, is a simple one. I'm a simple man. So are you. So this, is, this resonates with us. My charge to you today is to sing like a shepherd. Sing like a shepherd. Uh, church, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Revelation 15. <clears throat> Revelation 15, verses 2 through 4, we have here written the lyrics of a shepherd song. Verse 2 says, And I saw what appeared to be a sea of glass mingled with fire, and also those who had conquered the beast and its image and the number of its name standing beside the sea of glass with harps of God in their hands. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb saying, Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. Clay, the Apostle John has given us here a vision of the end, given us a glimpse of glory, where where the redeemed of God stand as conquerors in Christ. They stand beside a sea that is as still as glass. These are still waters. I want you to know that in their lifetime, and in our lifetime, that sea raged. They were tormented. They were tossed, persecuted, plagued, and plagued by all kinds of trials and temptations and sicknesses and sins and persecutions and doubts and feelings of inadequacy and, and, and dealing with the temptation that your worth is somehow found and how good you can sound feelings of of your own wrestlings with your own failures and and all these things, Clay, that, that you have and will deal with as a shepherd of the flock of God, all things that we will deal with as God's people. But here in Revelation 15, we have the redeemed of the Lord with harps of God in their hands, kind of like guitars, I guess, a little bit, but that they're standing beside still waters. The waters have ceased to rage. They are standing by waters as still as glass, and the redeemed of the Lord lift up a song to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of the nations, and they sing a shepherd song. They sing the song of Moses and of the Lamb. It was in the wilderness of Midian where Yahweh introduced himself to Moses. Yahweh, the the great covenant-keeping God of of Israel, Moses asked him, who should I say sent me? And he said, I am that I am sent you. God introduces himself to Moses. Moses was trying to disappear. Moses was, he was afraid. He was a, a fugitive. He had killed a man in Egypt. He's trying to disappear in the deserts of Midian. He was a shepherd for some 40 years of a flock that wasn't even his own flock. It was his father-in-law Jethro's flock. And God appears to him in a burning bush and he says, you know, I'm going to make you the shepherd of my people. At first, you guys remember Moses' this is his response? He's like, you've got the wrong guy, not me. I can't even talk good, he said. (laughs) And and, and God said, take that staff, that shepherd's staff, and watch what I can do. And so Moses goes, I can't tell the whole story. Pastor Jeremy only gave me 15 minutes up here. But uh, it's an awesome story. Ten plagues later, and, and, and the blood of a Passover lamb on the doorpost of every single household of the Hebrew children, Moses led God's people out of slavery and into freedom. And, and God wasn't done yet. You guys know the story. Instead of leading God's people to the promised land, God had Moses lead him directly, lead them directly into the wall of water called the Red Sea, a, a raging sea. Pharaoh's army was pursuing. God had hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh saw this opportunity. I'm going to destroy these people at this time. And so there they were, sandwiched between two enemies, a raging sea and and the greatest fighting force of the entire world at that time. 
And they cried out. You guys remember what Moses did? He lifted up the shepherd's staff and he cried out with a loud voice and he said, fear not, stand firm and see the salvation of our God. And he took that staff and the waters parted on either side such that there was a wall of water on the right, a wall of water on the left. And Moses, the shepherd of God's people, led God's people through the Red Sea, the raging sea, on dry ground. And when he got to the other side, God said, Moses, take your hand, lift it up over the waters. And he did, and the the waters crushed, crushed the enemies of God. God saved Israel from the hand of all his, her enemies on that day. And and church, I want to, I want to remind you and Clay, I'm here to talk to you. I got to remember who I'm talking to. (laughs) Like me and you, you know, Moses was probably a little, a little bit nervous when he was called on to preach. You know what I'm saying? Didn't have a whole lot to say. Now you have a lot to say, but, uh, when he was called on to preach, he didn't have a whole lot to say, but But here on the other side of the Red Sea, he didn't need anything to say because God gave that shepherd Moses a song to sing. Listen, church, to what he sang in Exodus chapter 15. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. He concludes this long song by crying out, the Lord will reign forever and ever. Clay, it's no surprise that that on on the, the shores of the sea of glass in Revelation 15, they are singing the song of Moses, shepherd of God. Uh, In light of this shepherd's song, the song of Moses, Clay, I want to charge you to sing like a shepherd. Uh, In your ministry, sing the song of of victory. Sing the song of the triumph, not of your triumph, not even necessarily the triumph of this church, but the triumph of the, the head of this church, Jesus the Christ, whose death, burial, and resurrection sealed the fate of sin and death and Satan himself. Sing that song, Clay. Sing like a shepherd. Mm. There's another song in this heavenly medley. Do you know what a medley is? That's an old-fashioned term for more than one song put together. It's a mashup, a heavenly mashup. Is that what you say now? Clay is so cool. He is so cool. I am not. It's the song of Moses and the song of the lamb. And will you say, how is the song of the lamb the song of a shepherd? It was Jesus, the lamb of God, who said in John chapter 10, verse 11, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus, who looked at Jerusalem and wept because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus was that good shepherd who became for his bride, the church, the spotless Passover lamb, the lamb of God who laid down his life for us. The shepherd became a lamb so that we might we might be forgiven. The shepherd became a lamb so that he might bear in himself the full brunt of the fury of the wrath of Almighty God on sin so that we, church, would not have to. I love what Isaiah says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one of us to his own way, but God has laid upon him, that is Christ, the iniquity of us all. The justice of a holy God was fully met when he poured his wrath out on his own son in our place. He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we in him might become the righteousness of God. Brother Clay, if ever there was a song to sing, it's the song of the good shepherd, the song of the lamb. So sing like a shepherd. Church, I gotta say this. I've kind of been talking to both of you, but this is mainly to Clay, but now it's mainly to you. There is no room for half-hearted praise in light of such a great salvation. 
In light of so great a salvation, there is no place for anything less than your everything as you sing the Good Shepherd song, as you sing the song of the Lamb. Remember who you were. You were once a citizen of the kingdom of darkness, but God in Christ, through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, has transferred you out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his beloved Son in love. You were once a slave to sin, but God in Christ has set you free from sin. And I love what Jesus says, if the Son has set you free, what? You shall be free indeed. You were once dead in your trespasses and sins. You were without hope in the world. You were completely incapable of raising yourself to life. But God, who is rich in mercy, has made us alive in Christ. By grace, we have been saved. Church and clay, this is, this is the song of the Lamb. It is a church, it is a song we're singing. What a song we have to sing. He is worthy, church. He's worthy, Clay. He's worthy of all blessing and honor and power and glory. And so sing, sing like a shepherd. Hmm. Clay, sing the song of a shepherd like Moses. Sing the song of a shepherd, the good shepherd like the lamb. Sing the song in such a way that you're so amazed and so enthralled at the mighty acts of God that your church can't help but know God better because of the way you sing. Sing in such a way that you're so humbled and undone by his grace on your life in such a way that, that your song, Clay, becomes the song of this body. It's a song we will sing together for all eternity. Clay, every Lord's Day, you have the opportunity to lead a heavenly choir practice before we even get to heaven. So prep your congregation in such a way. Prepare them to sing that song. Now, church, we're going to sing it better, praise the Lord, on that day when we see him face to face. But, Clay, it's your job, it's your job to teach them this song before they get there. Clay, may your ministry as a faithful shepherd of the flock of God and may your life's song be the song of a shepherd, the song of Moses, the song of the Lamb. Great and amazing are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All nations will come and worship you for your righteous acts have been revealed. Clay, this is the greatest job in the world. So sing like a shepherd.